<clears throat> Hi everybody, it's Peter Schiff. It is Wednesday, June 1st, 2011. Well, we had a big sell-off in the stock market today. The Dow dropped almost 280 points. Yields on the 10-year U.S. Treasury fell to their lowest levels of the year. We're actually now below 3% on the 10-year. The dollar sank to a new record low against the Swiss franc. It also fell against the yen, but it strengthened against other currencies, particularly those currencies associated with economic growth or commodities such as the Australian and New Zealand dollars. Gold rose, uh, not substantially. Silver, on the other hand, went the other direction and sold off by over a buck. The catalyst for all this was more weaker than expected economic data. Today, in particular, there was a one-two punch but I think the stronger was the earlier report that we got from ADP on jobs. I think the market was looking for something like 175,000 jobs created in the month of uh, May. Instead, we created, I think, only 38,000, and we lost about 10,000 goods-producing jobs. All the jobs that were created were in the uh, goods-consuming, the service sector, meaning more people collecting paychecks but not more people making stuff for people to buy with those paychecks. So it means bigger trade deficits, a wider economic imbalances, a weaker economy, more money printing, so more problems. Now, I don't know when Wall Street is going to start to ratchet down its expectations. After all, we've been bombarded by economic data for the last week or two, and every time we get it, it's always prefaced by weaker than expected. Why is it that Wall Street is so optimistic when clearly they should be a lot more pessimistic? It's because they still believe that the recession ended, that the government stimulus worked, and the economy is growing. When are they going to wake up to the reality that they're wrong? It's not that the recession ended. It's a depression, and it never ended. It's still here. All that happened was the government temporarily disguised the symptoms of the depression with stimulus. And so we went out and borrowed more money and spent it, and now we're deeper in debt. And the problem is whenever the government artificially stimulates the economy with cheap money, uh, you get a temporary boost as we spend all that cheap money, as we get deep, deeper into debt. But all that consumption is simply pulled forward from the future. Well, now we arrive at the future more deeply in debt than we were in the past, and now the contraction resumes, only it's worse now because we have bigger problems. Rather than solving our problems a couple of years ago, we made them worse. And the problem with government stimulus is the more you do it, the more you need to get an even smaller result. And whenever the stimulus wears off and the hangover sets in, of course, the bigger the dose of stimulus, the worse the ensuing hangover. And the one we're about to have is going to be enormous. You know, a case in point about all the damage from government stimulus is look what they've done to the housing market. Forget about the fact that the government caused the housing bubble through cheap interest rates from the Fed and the moral hazard of government guaranteed loans uh, from Fannie and Freddie. Back in 2009, when the government intervened to prevent real estate prices from falling, which was part of the solutions to our problem, not the problem itself, the government intervened with stimulus. We had record low mortgage rates. We, we nationalized uh, Freddie and Fannie. We had first-time homebuyers tax credits uh, to induce people to buy houses and to overpay for them. What is the result? We, we, we got a temporary boost in home prices, but now we suckered more people into an overvalued home market. These people now have negative equity. They are now part of the problem. They're not part of the solution. We also delayed foreclosures. A lot of foreclosures that should have taken place back in 2009 and 2010 haven't. Those, pro those properties are now part of the unsold inventory. We have a bigger glut. Now real estate prices, according to Case Schiller yesterday, we now hit new lows. We are now lower than we were in, uh, at the lows of 2009. In fact, I think four of the markets are now at their lows of January 2000. We've wiped out over 10 years of appreciation in certain markets. Of course, the other markets are going to follow. Real estate prices are now going to have to fall a lot more 
than they otherwise would have had the government not artificially propped them up two years ago, brought more people into the market, now created a bigger foreclosure problem, and delayed the shakeout. So this is what happens. And if you think about the situation where we're in right now, normally in the business cycle, the government is lowering interest rates to stimulate the economy. It doesn't necessarily stimulate the economy. It stimulates a lot of consumption. The GDP goes up. Normally, by the time the government starts or the Fed starts tightening, you've had a lot of economic growth or some maybe even legitimate, but some of it phony, but you've had GDP going up. You've got much lower levels of unemployment because a lot of people have found jobs. Normally, when they're tightening, you know, it's from a much stronger position. Where are we now? The economy is already relapsing back into recession, and interest rates are still at rock bottom. The Fed is still doing QE, and more important, it's supposed to come to an end in a month. In fact, the Fed is saying they're supposed to start tightening. Well, instead of tightening when the economy is strong and getting stronger, they're tightening when it's weak and getting weaker. That is the box that we're in. And if the Federal Reserve follows through with tightening at this stage of the game we are going to have a far worse economic collapse than we did in 2008 why because we're more leveraged we're more deeply in debt we have compounded our problems we haven't solved anything yes we bought some very expensive time we bought a few years of phony economic growth but at what cost the cost is a much greater collapse than the one we would have had if we had simply uh, swallowed the bitter tasting medicine. Of course, had we swallowed that medicine in 2001 and 2002, when it wasn't nearly as bitter uh, as it's going to be, uh, then we'd be in much, much better shape. But no, the government doesn't want to do that. And when are investors going to wake up to this reality? You know, people who are rushing in and buying the bond market, maybe what they think is that they believe that the Fed is not going to do a QE3, or maybe... They're counting on it and they're buying bonds now because they want to sell into the announcement that the Fed is going to do a QE3 because more monetary stimulus is not good for the bond market. It is a disaster for the bond market because it will be a disaster for the dollar. The dollar will collapse if we do QE3. There's no doubt in my mind that it will happen. The fact that it's rallying today against some currencies, I think, is a function of the fact that a lot of people still don't expect QE to come. But I'm confident it will. I, I'm, in fact, I think the Fed knows that QE3 is coming. It's just looking for an excuse uh, to go ahead with it. But it wants to pretend that the economy doesn't need it. The Fed can't uh, tell the truth. You know, just like Jack Nicholson I, uh, in A Few Good Men, the Fed knows the market can't handle the truth. What is the truth? The truth is the economy is a basket case and it can't survive without artificial stimulus from the Fed and that eventually it's going to die of an overdose because you can't stimulate the economy forever. And, you know, I mentioned earlier that the, that the dollar hit a record low today against the Swiss franc. I read an article in Bloomberg yesterday about the, the, the strength of the Swiss franc and how this is a problem for the Swiss economy. And the article talked about all the shopkeepers in Switzerland that are having a hard time getting the tourists to buy their Rolexes because they're cheaper uh, in, 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 their, in their own country. But the article also points out that the unemployment rate in Switzerland is 3% or 3.1%, a third of what it is in the Eurozone where it's 9.9%, and that the Swiss economy is growing faster than the Eurozone. And they're saying that despite the strength of the Swiss franc, we've got all this positive economic data. Well, how does this reporter know that the Swiss economy is doing well despite the strong Swiss franc? Maybe, just maybe, it's doing well because of the strong Swiss franc. Did he ever think of that? Or maybe the economic policies that are responsible for a growing and strong Swiss economy are the same policies that are producing a strong Swiss franc. The reality is a strong economy and a strong currency go hand in glove. They are not opposites. They are not mutually exclusive. A strong economy doesn't have to overcome a strong currency. A strong currency helps an economy strengthen, and a strong economy 
helps keep a currency strong. That is the reality. The reason that we have a weak dollar is because we don't have a strong economy. We have a phony economy. We have a bubble economy that is in the process of popping right now. And the, and the tough decision the Federal Reserve is going to have to make very shortly is, are they going to end QE2 and tighten, drain the liquidity, raise interest rates into a weakening economy and produce a recession greater than 2008 and put us in a situation where many of the banks that were bailed out are going to fail again and this time there can be no help from the government because there can't be any bailouts if the Fed is tightening. They can only do bailouts if the Fed is doing the bailing by printing all the money. So is the Fed going to do that or are they going to give in to the politicians in Wall Street? Are they going to give us another shot of that cheap money fix so that we don't have to have a hangover, so we can have another high and maybe prop up the stock market a little bit more? But when they do that, they will pull the rug out from under the dollar and probably this time out from under the bond market too. That will send commodity prices surging. That will send interest rates surging. And then, then we have the real problem. Then it's slam on the brakes create something worse than the Great Depression and it, you know, with inflation, much, much worse, or keep stimulating and turn inflation into runaway inflation, into hyperinflation. Those are the decisions. This is what we're heading for. And it's all because of government, government stimulus, central planning, central banking. I know they're going to try to blame capitalism. They're going to try to blame greedy people in Wall Street. They're going to try to blame everybody but themselves. But the people listening to this video blog ought to know that if, if Washington and the Federal Reserve want to know why this economy is falling apart around them, all they have to do is look in the mirror. Anyway, that's it for today. Take care, everybody.